Hi, everyone. Hello again. We're in Genesis 25, the end of the life of Abraham, reading from 25, 1 to 10. You're starting. Right, because the names are there, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Abraham took another wife whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan fathered Sheba and Dadan. The sons of Dadan were Asherim, Latushim, and Leumim. The sons of Midian were Ephah, Ephor, Hanak, Abida, and Eldah. All these were the children of Keturah. Abraham gave all he had to Isaac, but to the sons of his concubines Abraham gave gifts. And while he was still living, he sent them away. Oh, sent them eastward, away from Isaac his son, to the country of the east. This is the sum of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived, 175 years. Then Abraham breathed his last and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. And his son Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar, the Hittite, the field which Abraham purchased from the sons of Heth. There Abraham was buried, and Sarah, his wife. Uh, I suppose the first thing we should look at is a, is a technicality in verse 3, mm -hmm. when it says the sons of Dadan were Asherim, Latushim, and Leumim. This reminds me that we, when we did the very first video on the text and the structure of Genesis, I think it's number 15 in the Genesis playlist, we, we discussed the fact that you don't notice this really when you're casually reading it, but the book of Genesis is divided into 10 pieces. These are the Toledoth. These are the generations of, etc. Mm -hmm. And many people, many scholars believe that that is because the book of Genesis as we have it is actually compiled from documents that were earlier than Moses. Mm. So then in this verse you have evidence of that, namely that these names of the sons of Dadan are tribes, Asherim, Latushim, and Leomim, whereas the other names that are mentioned are, seem to be personal names. Mm. So it's as if whoever had the original list only knew the tribal names mm. for those particular sons and had personal names for, for other genealogies. Mm -hmm. And I, when I read this, the the idea of him sending away the concubine's children always seemed kind of unfair to me. Like mm -hmm. it was like, or or just at least like, well, that's not very nice, <laughs> right? That he sends them away, but he does give gifts to them. Mm -hmm. And there was a difference between, like, so Isaac is getting the lion's share. It says land he's, he's getting mm -hmm. yeah that promise. But even later, you find they do that. The the firstborn, whoever's chosen to be the head of the, the the next generation, basically, he's supposed to, he gets that as a responsibility mm. to take care of all the relatives of the family later. Yeah, he's the family steward, so he has a double portion normally. Yeah. And here, because he's the heir the heir of Abraham, despite the fact he's the father of many nations. He yeah. is the heir of the land promise. Yeah, that's the specific promise that that God told him would go to Isaac. So what do we make of, of verse 8? Breathed his last, Abraham breathed his last, and died in a good old age, an old man full of years, for sure, 175. Yeah, I always like the way that says that, good old age and full of years. But what about was <laughs> gathered to his people? Yeah. What would you do with that as a Jehovah's Witness? Yeah, we it, it's almost like it's just a nice poetic phrase when you're a witness. It didn't have a lot of meaning for me. It, di it didn't have any sense to it. Like, what do you mean, gathered to his people? They're all dirt, according to you as a witness. And according to Genesis itself, there's only one person of his family that's in the this grave site that he purchased from yeah. the Hittite. At this point, only Sarah is there. Only Sarah. So it can't mean the grave. Like, we get sentimental about yeah. grave sites, right? Yeah, and we want all the family to be there. And, and uh, yeah, 
it's uh I think it is more sentiment at that point. But for them I think there's there's a an idea of a hope, a future hope. Yeah, this is what's missing from our Jehovah's Witness worldview about the what the Jews believed, what the Israelites believed even before that Moses about life after death. The mm -hmm. best clue we have is is in chapter 37 of Genesis where you remember when when Jacob finds out that Joseph is dead, mm -hmm. presumably. Mm -hmm. What does he say? He says, it says all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted and said, no, I shall go down to Sheol to my son, mourning. Thus his father wept for him. So mm -hmm. it's not the grave. He doesn't even know where Joseph's body is. Mm -hmm. So you have that idea again that no, the Jews as dictionaries, Bible dictionaries confirm the Jews believed in a survival of the person, personality. Some kind of reunion? And a future reunion, which was very vague. Yes, there was a resurrection explicitly later in the Bible, mm -hmm. and Hebrews says that Abraham did believe in this mm -hmm. future hope. So they did believe in the resurrection, but in the meantime, they weren't annihilated. They survived death in a, in a sleep-like condition, but it wasn't annihilation. It wasn't non-existence. So this idea that all men go to Sheol, it's not just the good guys. Joseph presumably is in the mind of his dad a good guy. But all people, according to the, the ancient view, went to this same place until the day of judgment and mm -hmm. the resurrection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it shows the unnaturalness of death, that we mourn the loss of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's read what Mr. Calvin and Sarna and Thomas Scroggy have to say about this passage. Calvin says, this dismissal, and that's so we're talking about the kids that are being sent away. This dismissal was indeed apparently harsh and cruel, but it was agreeable to the appointment and decree of God in order that the entire possession of the land might remain for the posterity of Isaac. For it was not lawful for Abraham to divide at his own pleasure that inheritance which had been granted entire to Isaac. Wherefore, no course was left to him but to provide for the rest of his sons in the manner here described. And the Jewish commentator Nahum Sarna says the original blessing of Abraham promised simply to make his name great. After the covenant established with him and the ensuing change of name, the promise is spelled out with greater precision. A great name means to be the father of a multitude of nations. Abraham would be exceedingly fertile. Kings would issue from him. Accordingly, the record of the demise of the patriarch is an appropriate place for the genealogical lists in that they demonstrate how the divine promise was fulfilled. That is to say, the entire Abrahamic biography is encased within the framework, or within a framework, of promise and fulfillment. Hmm. Griffith Thomas says, The description of his death is very beautiful, and it is interesting to note that he was gathered to his people, refer referring to their reunion in the unseen world. It is obvious that this phrase cannot possibly refer to his burial, since only Sarah's body was in that tomb. And Graham Scroggy, interesting, you, we don't notice this, but Scroggy does, being a very careful Bible student. The word faith, that is the noun faith, does not occur in the Old Testament, but the quality is exhibited there, and nowhere more dearly and wonderfully than in Abraham. The objects of faith are the future and the unseen, and its office is to give present existence to future things and vital reality to unseen things. Most people die without ever having truly lived, but Abraham, being dead, yet lives. Mm. He's thinking of Hebrews here, it seems. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a marvelous thing to think about. The noun yeah. faith isn't. So what's the equivalent of that in the Old Testament? Well, it's a verb. He believed. Yeah, I mean, didn't didn't Jesus say that he is the God of the living? So that would give you the sense that, well, they can't just be dirt in a, a grave. He is the God of the living. They're still living. It's mysterious. 
Yeah. But we should be content with just leaving it that way, it seems to me, and not mm. force it into our preconceived notion of what what human life is. Mm. What are our links? Uh, the one I have marked down is the, the very first one, of, like you said, number 15. Mm. The first 14 of our Genesis playlist were our, our own anecdotal videos. You might call them the, the greatest hits of Genesis in, the, in, in our the coming out of the Watchtower, the impact these texts had on us. Right. So then we get to the book of Genesis proper to the text and the structure of the book in, in the 15th video. And that one has this concept of the Toledoth, the structure being these the are the generations of. Mm -hmm. So I'll put that one on your screen. Also the Genesis playlist. playlist. Yeah. Okay. See you soon.